That is clever. Do you know what I want to make? I'll make t-shirts. Do you know what I'm going to do? Mm. I'm going to make a sledgehammer. Okay. You know this is being recorded, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of making, I don't know, I just thought of it, yeah. Like on the on the t-shirt. You're coming out of the frame, by the way. No, sorry. On the t-shirt, I'm going to have a sledgehammer on it. Okay. I'm going to put hak on it. <laughs> on top of the sledgehammer. It's like we're smashing the, the world with. I like a sledgehammer. But maybe David Wood will get excited and get a few of those t-shirts. Because you know, trying to smash his dad. On that note, we're actually going to be talking about an interesting topic today. We're going to be talking about jinns in evolutionary history. Voila. <laughs> that woke you up. So I want to put something to you. Um, humans are unique mm. when it comes to evolutionary history. Humans are different because when you look at ants, you look at pigs, you look at elephants, you look at antelope, you look at all these different species. Human history is filled with stories and human societies are intertwined with these ideas of there being these demons, these spirits and all across the world you'll find people doing you know, in societies, people doing rain dances and things to appease the spirits and these types of things. And what's very interesting is Allah talks about how mankind is being led astray and has been led astray by the jinn. So isn't it interesting that even from a purely atheistic perspective, mm. it's pretty strange that human beings are obsessed with these spirits and these demons and the, the whatever whatever uh, words actually used for them and uh, actually that the islam actually has an answer islam actually says human beings and jinns are both creatures with free will and they interact and throughout human history the idea of knowing the future and then sacrificing to these demons and all these sorts of things actually correlate. And just to add to this, many years ago, we had this person who attended uh, one a new Muslim sort of retreat. And uh, that person became Muslim and... Is they, Farouk? And then Farouk. Uh, which Farouk? Ginger. Um, basically, I'm, I'm not sure what his name was. Because uh, I just had a conversation with Farouk that about Jinns, he was saying some similar stuff to you. Okay, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. He said he became Muslim because of that. Because of well, was he a paranormal investigator? I don't know. Okay, because there was a brother who's a paranormal investigator, and when he found out about the Islamic concept of Jinn, he mm. basically, that was like a big thing for him. Mm. So anyway, what do you think about this idea of evolutionary history and Jinn? I don't know about evolutionary history and Jinn, but I, I think Jinn is, a, is like, is a thing people come into contact with, like, I, I remember when some people were doing Tarawih in Finsbury Park, Moscow, some Moscow like that in North London, and some woman was uh, possessed or whatever, yeah, and she li literally levitated on that and everyone saw it. Really? Yeah, so there's there? stuff like that. I wasn't there, but I heard about uh, it. What was it. What's been your interaction with Jim? Uh, they tried try to come to me sometimes, speak to me, and right? when I realized it's them, I just try to get rid of them, and you know? No, but like, Honestly, seriously? What lie? One of them tried to come to me yesterday. When I noticed them, I, I start yeah, and pushing them, pushing the envelope, and, and yeah. Uh, when you have the Quran, it's very. It's difficult. nearly midnight, so the truth is coming out. You know, we're laying well, out when the, the Quran, Quran. When you have the Quran, they can't do not, not do nothing. Mm. They week but yeah what can they do do you reckon that um the obsession with jinn the obsession with you know magic the obsession with you know all these things even in a deeply secular world these are so hard to get rid of so for example even people experience it man it's like yeah. people have i've had experience like i've, I've seen people have seen people have felt you can I had a friend of mine that for a long time I've seen. He said this. I had this thing it's like sleep paralysis. They, 
Jin was talking to me and it was like people have had these experiences and the secular explanations are not doing there's not enough there's not enough and even even our fascination like if you look at children's books like harry potter you know there's that thing about magic mm. and then you know all these kids are reading it and people are interested in these in movies you have them people experience it's a sociological experiment on this like they should actually be systematic because it's something that is so cross-cultural reported by so many people and that is not Explained through a naturalistic framework. Jinns are self-evident. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the evi- no, the evidence through people's experiences. Unless you want to, because the thing is, here's here's a, here's the really shocking thing, right? The, the the thing is, if you look in psychology, psychosis is defined as someone's inability to uh, kind of be in touch with reality. That is what someone who is psychotic is someone who is not in touch with reality. But then, if there's like, for example, if if you go now to your psychiatrist, if you go to a psychiatrist, and you say I've had these experiences where X, Y, Z happened, so right? you're mad. They'll say that is psychosis. Mm. Now, I actually wasn't. I was. I had this. I was going to a psychiatrist, not for myself, but for somebody else. I was going with the other person, and I had to. This was actually shocking. Like I remember this moment like it was yesterday. And the person was bipolar, right? They, were, they had hypomanic episodes or whatever. And I was speaking to the psychiatrist. And the person said, like, oh, you know, I had this experience with the devil did this and whatever, and blah, blah, blah. And so just as, as, as that was said, the psychiatrist was going to say, all right, and we're going to give you antipsychotics, which is a type of drug, which is actually quite high octane stuff, like, because for bipolar, you, you don't necessarily need, uh, bipolar, so you don't need, um, antipsychotics yeah. necessarily. There's different, um, variants, different drugs you can take with tyropine or whatever, this kind of things that they take well. And so I said to the psychiatrist at that time, I said, look, religiously, this is what Muslims believe. We believe in the spiritual world. We believe in the jinn, blah, blah, blah. And it's, this is not a one-off experience. Lots of people report having the same experience. Because she had almost made a decision to make prescription for antipsychotics. After I spoke for about two, three minutes explaining this to her, she decided not to do that. But this made me think... There's something bigger to, to this because if psychosis is defined, think about this, right? Because psychology here is really important in this equation. If, if psychosis is defined as a lack of a person's ability to be in touch with reality, but reality is defined as what society <laughs> corresponds <laughs> to saying is, is happening in the yeah. human experience. What if a whole society is saying or not? A whole society, a whole group of people are all corresponding and saying, we have experienced this thing, X. Yeah. Could you justifiably say that that's not part of reality? You can't, because reality is defined in this context by our experience. So but let me put it in this way. Let me put it in this exact way, right? Let's say, because this is the example, everyone likes a very um, kind of popular example now. If we get 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, and we give them psychedelics, and I think some of these uh, studies have actually been done, okay? We give them psychedelics, and we separate them from one another, and we ask them what they observed or experienced. Yeah. Now look, if every single one of them said, we saw a monkey, okay, for example, or we saw a rainbow with, or we saw whatever it is, and they described exactly the same experience, the, the same visuals, or let's not say exactly the same. Let's say there's like three or four different categories of things which are so common that they saw. And we bring that, what, what is going to be the conclusion? What kind of inference can we make from that? We can say that psychedelics induce these states. So that, you can call them hallucinations. If you want to, you can. But they are very organized hallucinations. Mm. So what, what, at what point do hallucinations become real? 
Because if they are coherent and they're organized and they're categorized, then are they actually even hallucinations? All these people are seeing the same things. So are they even, so the question is now the line is blurred between that which is real, i.e. material and understood through sense data, and, and that which is not. Because when you take psychedelics, you're putting yourself in a because it's a hallucinogen, right? Okay, so biologically we know what's happening to you. You're going through a hallucination, yeah. so called hallucination. But if the hallucination is as organized as the non hallucination, then it becomes mm -hmm. as real as it by definition. Now, now th that's just a psychological example, because that's what the main contention is going to be. Mm -hmm. They're going to say it's a hallucination. But if it's a hallucination, why is it organized in similar ways cross culturally and historically? That's my question. Like, and I feel like the Muslim world actually has some work to do by way of sociological investigation. Mm -hmm. If they if they are doing sociological, uh, sorry, um, psychological investigations, not not only Muslims, I would say, bro, I would say even atheists and theists. They should I mean, look I mean, into they, it. There are atheists who would say definitely, I've had these demonic experiences. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, the, this whole thing about taking DMT and this and that, no, but they don't, seeing the same these guys, thing. They, 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 they like from who are speaking to people like to, to DMT and stuff, none of them say, okay, we see exactly a black dog every single time. If you get a, a million people that have taken DMT and separate them, imagine if of them, 30% said we saw a black dog, 20% said we saw a snake, 30% uh, said we heard these exact types of noises. Then, okay, we could even go as far as to say if you take hallucinogens or in particular psychedelics, DMT, whatever it may be, that these are the side effects. Forget about hallucinations. These are side effects. You're going to see this. It, it stops becoming hallucination now. It becomes a reality for you. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, now, what I'm saying is, why don't we treat the jinn discussion in similar ways as we're treating psychedelics? Because if we have a thousand million whatever people, sample size, yeah? And all of, because this is from my own anecdotal experience, and that's why I'm saying I can't really do much now because it's anecdotal. Speak to a million people, right? That And separate places, they don't you no connection with each other. They'll say, I've seen a black dog. They'll say, I've seen a snake. They'll say, I heard, I see an old man or something, like, you know, old woman. It's the same pictures, images, visuals, uh, sounds, all the, like, you can categorize them. So now the question is the same. At what point do we say it stops being hallucination, stops yeah. being reality? Yeah, no, definitely. And, um, you know, another angle that, you know, we began off with as well, that from an evolutionary perspective, if it's just about survival and fitness and reproduction and all this type of stuff, why are humans so obsessed with the unseen? Why are they so obsessed with magic and mm. demons and spirits and shaman and, and, you know, these types of things? And then people spend so much time, you know, and what, what is drugs really about? It's about trying to transcend. It's not about let me take these drugs and survive and reproduce. No, actually, it's about trying to get out of yourself right trying to escape so you know why do human beings even have these traits and i think from an islamic perspective we can actually put this down to jinn's influence and jinn's whisperings and, and these types of things so there you have it you're not going to really get this on any other channel inshallah <laughs> late night well, discussions we didn't plan this we didn't yeah and i was going to talk about evolution and uh you know uh shaman and, but i've been yeah. thinking about these matters for yeah, some you've time been thinking a lot and, and I, th <laughs> I think that no bro because i'll tell these guys and, and let me ask them maybe we can do this as an experiment uh, but, but, but I, I think what we should do we should end this one now let me ask them a question no i tell you why because i'm worried about the memory uh because it cuts out after a certain amount of time right, we'll fine. do it again we'll, end it. we'll do we'll do one more inshallah so your last words on this okay one more yeah this is what i want to ask i want to ask them this question I want to ask them, would you like it if we did an experiment where we go to one of these Iraqis and we literally... Not, not an Iraqi, but Iraqi. Iraqi. Yeah. And we we, 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 we kind of showed you what what the continuities are. Like, we, we, we see, we sit there and let them see how they like, get rid of the gin or whatever. And would you like us to do a documentary style investigation to that effect? If you do, then we can make that happen. We can. So just let us know. <laughs>
wouldn't you love it? <laughs> well, there's, you know what, uh, a, there's somebody possessed with a gin just freaking out, and then you go WWE mode. Do, do you know? <laughs> do you, no, a lot of the times that has to. Have you not seen what happens? These guys go crazy. I, I hate those. I, I can't watch those videos. It, they're so well, disturbing. When, when they go crazy and stuff like that. But was, the, the thing is, you know, we were talking about <laughs> talking about this stuff many, many years ago. I was actually locked in a room by a gin from the inside. No way. Yeah. And then. No, I, I obviously did that, but it, it, you know, everybody has these experiences yeah. where the gin comes in, does something crazy. You're like, the heck? Are, are you sure you weren't, you know, thinking something? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I was purely halal. Um, so anyway, Jazakallah khair. Um, this was supposed to be a Darwinian delusions episode that was supposed to be speaking about evolution and, and, and jinn, but it's now turned into something else. But we will have, again, Mr. Hijab speaking about this topic. Inshallah. So, so. Here you go. What's the next one? <laughs>